Well, first of all, I'd like to say just how excited I am that we have the privilege at Portland Opera of doing the West Coast premiere of Philip Glass's Orfei. Um, I don't think there's a better introduction to Philip Glass's uh, operas than this one. Uh, it doesn't have the length or the complexity of, um, say, Einstein on the Beach or Achnarten or Satyagraha, but it has everything that makes Philip Glass really quite simply one of, if not the most important voice in art music of our century. And, I mean, he's been loved by the public for so many years, his music is so accessible and so enjoyable, um, but is of such an important nature culturally that uh, critics love to be hostile towards him. So his music is controversial, um, beloved by the public, and will be around for a very long time. Um, I just think this piece is delightful. I mean, it's full of so many colours, and, you know, it's, it's only my second minimalist opera. Nixon in China, John Adams, was just so popular when we did it here last time. Really the sleeper hit of the season. And I have every faith that Philip Glass's Orfei will do just as much, if not more. It's, um, it's, it's the length of a feature film. It's, uh, you know, exactly the same libretto as the Jean Cocteau film. Um, so rather than going to see a movie, come and see this. It's uber cool. And it's simply as cool as music and art gets in this century, in this day and age, um, and has everything under the sun. I mean, if I play you just a snippet of the, the opening scene, uh, I think you'll agree it, it sounds like Scott Joplin. We're in a bar, um, and actually a, a brawl is about to break out. Someone's actually drunkenly swaggering around in this artistic cafe, and we get this. <laughs> in the left hand, all of those wonderful syncopations in the right, they're just, you know, they, they embody everything that is drunken swagger in a bar, and that I think you've got to agree there's nothing to be frightened about there. Um, modern music suffers from these labels of when, you know, when the trend split at the beginning of this century, we end up with isms, and they're just dangerous for the public. Um, we have impressionism and we have neoclassicism and atonality and the serialists. And I think those terms have been misleading and very frightening. Um, and there is nothing to be scared of in this music. Um, it's firmly tonal. Uh, if I compare it to Britain, Britain's turn of the screw that we did last season, it's, it's much more tonal. Uh, and much more recognisable to um, the popular ear than, than th that score was, even though that was such a wonderful production. Um, and yet there's, there's a, a very important mark of genius for me. It's not just that um, the composer has something worthwhile to say, it's that I think, you know, a very important composer and the most important composers have a very distinct individual voice. Um, there's something about this Asian influence and this kind of spirituality around it, this constant motor rhythm that goes through all of his music, um, that identifies his music as being from the information age and of being modern and cultural, but being individually and uniquely him. So this is when um, the princess is adoring Orfei in his sleep. And apart from being just wonderfully atmospheric and evocative, as you'd expect from such an accomplished film composer, it's uniquely Philip Glass. Huh? Just simple major minor chords and this beautiful melody full of longing. quite evocative, just a, a stunning depiction of what's actually going on on stage. Really, some beautiful stuff. And then there's what we've come to expect from Philip Glass. These blocks of sound that build up. Um, these textures, these polyrhythms, these cross rhythms that build up into this, this uh, glorious kind of unfolding, uh, this almost hypno hypnotic, mesmerizing 
culmination of sound. So this is just a, a little snippet from an interlude, a musical interlude, um, as Orfei is coming back to his house in Act Two. So we start with this simple motor, motor rhythm again in the left hand. And then something faster on the top, which is expanded. practicing it that I can, I can get lost in it and sit in it for hours. And I think as you come and see this opera, your sense of time will actually change. I think you'll be amazed as to just how short it seems. That he's firmly tonal, um, but has a, a kind of extended harmonic vocabulary that's very unique um, and qu quite, I mean, there's bits of the X-Files in there, there's bits of, you know, the sound, the soundtrack from the hours. Um, this is uh, the, the end of the opera, and beautifully evocative. Six chimes, to show it it's still six o'clock. And then these gorgeous chords. Um, definitely modern, but perfectly accessible, perfectly enjoyable to, to anyone's ears these days. Um, one of my favourite scenes, I think this is, in our town and on this coast, I think this is one of the most exciting and important events that has happened in art, especially in, you know, in Portland. And you're going to get an experience out of this that is, you will take so much away from. It will make you think on so many levels. Um, there are so many elements involved. There's the, the Cocteau film, which in itself is a classic, the first use of special effects in movies. Um, and then there's also Philip Glass's music, which is vital to us now. It's, it's one of the most important voices of our time, and he's going to be here in our town talking about it, um, seeing this opera. Um, but the, the production is visually stunning. It's just one of the most visually stunning productions I've seen. Um, and then there's the Orf Orfei myth, which has been reproduced in so many guises for centuries and is still so important to us all. Um, I, I am still thinking about this score on a daily basis, um, and questions are being answered and new questions are being posed. It's going to be a great experience, a really important experience, and it's your cultural responsibility to come and see it. Um, be part of, you know, art and culture in your time. It, this is, it's happening right here in Portland, at Portland Opera. You should come and enjoy it. It's going to be great. <laughs>